The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Oh, yeah! This is the Cigar Authority. Have uh, you any imported cigars? The authority on everything cigar, in and out of the cigar industry. We're on a mission from God. With your host... A jelly donut! David Garofalo. How did it get here? Mr. Jonathan. I hear you, <laughs> and I care. Barry Stein. I can use my spare glove compartment underwear as a napkin. And Ed Sullivan. They don't have a listing for Mr. Wonderful. What uh, spelling did you use? It's time to light them up. Smoke if you got them. It's time for the Cigar Authority. I got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell. Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. For Mr. Jonathan, Saturday, March 23rd, 2019. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The TAA is the Tobacconist Association of America, a group that calls themselves the best retailers in America. Are they? We'll get to that. I just got back from the 51st annual meeting, and I'll tell you all about it. Welcome back to the Cigar Authority. Do you have to be so goddamn loud all the time? Do you have a problem with us being loud? Mr. Jonathan has a hangover this morning. He thinks he might still be drunk. <laughs> and you're listening to Amateur. the Cigar Authority. Now in its ninth year, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast. Awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar Radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network. Catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog on thecigarauthority.com. So, feeling woozy? What are you feeling? Uh, I, I, I got a new friend, and he has taken a shining to me and was delivering drinks to my location. So, you tied one on last night? On. And I'm not talking about the alcohol. <laughs> there were <Right>. no ribbons. <laughs> Around the old injured. tree. <laughs> in this, uh, in this a- performance. And you went a day without coffee. You think that has something to do with it? No, I go days without coffee all the time. Really? And I drink a lot of coffee. You would think I'd be addicted to it, but it, I got no issue. Yeah, all right. Okay, uh, we got a couple of cigars to smoke today. One that actually has a band on it that uh, we know what it is, so let's get to that first. What do we have, Barry? Today's first cigar is the 2012, 2012, whatever you want to call it, by Oscar. It's manufactured in Honduras by Oscar Valadares. When did it come out? Not in 2012. Really? Uh, yes. Came out a year, maybe two years ago at the most. Uh, size is 6x52, box press Toro. It features a Connecticut seed wrapper, Honduran binder, and fillers from Honduras and Nicaragua. It's part of the Cigar Authority Care Package, and a single cigar will set you back 869 All right. So Connecticut seed wrapper. Yes. That's like when people say it's Cuban seed and it's bologna. It's not made in Cuba or whatever. <clears throat> They're not saying whether it's from Ecuador, whether it's it's obviously not from Connecticut because they wouldn't they would just say Connecticut, Connecticut at that right. point. They are growing shade grown tobacco in Honduras now. Could yeah. this be Connecticut seed grown in Honduras? Is there still a stigma to it that they don't want to say Honduran Connecticut? Well, I'll tell you this. Here's what I'll say about it. It's 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 kind of bleached. Yes. Bleached it's out. Overly blonde. Yeah. And uh Is that a bad thing? I don't know how it's going to taste, but I'm telling you, it does not. It, it looks dry. It looks bleached out. It doesn't look like Connecticut or Ecuador. It doesn't look like U.S. Connecticut right. or Ecuador shade. Right. It's something different. It's probably Honduran shade grown Connecticut seed. Yeah, just it just doesn't look like either of those. It looks, um, I don't know. And by them saying that, it just gave it, you know, you say it and it gives it more attention. You yeah. give more attention to what you're trying to cover up, I think. I may be wrong and, and maybe it's not, but I don't know. Um, but anyway, uh, let's give it a, a cut and light and see what it uh, tastes like. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax, and actually lower them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. excellence. Cold drawer, lemon sweet tart. Mm. Agreement and disagreement, where do we stand? Wow, well, easy draw. It's got Overly a draw. easy. Yes. Yeah. And it's box pressed. Usually you wouldn't think it's going to draw like that. 
Feels light, too. Yeah, it feels very light. I got a little lemon zest. I don't know about that Pop-Tart nonsense you got going on over there. Barry Stone. Ed Sullivan says he thinks he kind of nailed it. I'm a little cranky today. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like a lemon Pop-Tart. Mmm. Buttered? Buttered. Oh. Have you ever Come put on. butter on a Pop-Tart? It's so freaking good. You know, if, if the three of you came in hungover, I wouldn't mess with you this much. Yeah, right. Yeah. Look forward to it. We're going to light our cigar today with the Vertigo Attaché. The Vertigo Attaché features a single jet, single action, and an easy adjustment wheel along with the patented Vertigo big-ass tank. The Vertigo Attaché retails for $9.99. Attaché? Is that how you pronounce it, really? With the... At being attaché. Um, attaché. I know. Well, I know. It's you, not attachy, as some people say, yeah, parents. I know you hung over, uh, but I don't have a lighter. Wow! Oh. Open your eyes, jackass! Ah, you had it hidden. You put the Was, um, wasn't in direct I'm not dealing with you. Reach from his. It was directly in front of yeah. him. Yeah, that's why I couldn't see it. I like a single jet. I don't use them often, but I like a single jet. I like a single jet on a smaller ring gauge. You know, if I'm going to have a Lancero or a Corona. No, that's why I, I go will, five jets. I will almost always use a single jet. Boy, I remember, though, when that first came out, the single jet. Oh, my God. It was the biggest thing. Game changer. Oh, my God. Everyone, and now we look at it. Oh, a single jet? Every woman had those blazers. Blazers, right? right. That was the big thing. And they were like 80 bucks. Yeah, they weren't cheap. Yeah. They were originally used in the jewelry business for, mm. for melting uh, yeah. metals. Dentists used them. Yeah. Well, well, you you couldn't get them, yeah. If a dentist comes near my mouth with a jet flame lighter, <laughs> no, I think he's he, fired. He would melt something and then put it in your tooth. Speaking of which. We, we could a, fix Mikey's tooth we with had, one we, of the at 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 accidents. Ashes. Accident today on the Snack Authority. Someone <laughs> lost a tooth. We had our first it's injury. Dangerous. It was an injury. It happened during the show. And uh, listen, you do these things, it, problems can happen. You assholes are eating snacks. <laughs> you make it sound like you're going into outer space. You never know what could happen. Like the Challenger exploded. Was it something caramel related? No, nope. no, it was not. Yeah. And it, it was a crunchy thing. And. Uh, You'd be surprised. That they In can my take, late can teens, I would say 18, 19, I was eating a caramel, and I lost my last baby tooth as a result of it. <laughs> <laughs> Popped it right out. <laughs> Off a late, yeah, late time. Yeah. It's a late How long there. after that did you stop breastfeeding? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm planning on starting later today. And were you bald by then? Uh, 18. No, I, think I, I think I started shaving at 19. <clears throat> Wow. Somebody thinks I'm handsome because they very were buying airy. me drinks last night. Very uh, airy. Yep. This would be a good cigar for somebody just starting out smoking as a first cigar. Easy yeah. drawer, not a lot of strength, maybe yeah. one or two. I don't. You guys cannot evaluate the strength of a cigar with eight puffs. You can get that initial feel. Okay, this is going to be strong when you. When it's this light and this mellow, you could tell. No, you can't. A quarter of an inch. You in. need at least an inch to evaluate the strength of anything. That's what I tell my wife. This is light in flavor, light in weight. Mm. There is a, there is very light flavor. Not no flavor, but it's very subtle. Very. A little very. vanilla. <clears throat> and this is the Toro. A little dried ap apricot. So what's 2012 have to do with this? Couldn't tell you. Yeah? You know, your only job on the show <laughs> is, is to, to tell, tell us about the friggin' cigars. I, you, finding any information about this cigar online was very difficult. Yeah. Their website doesn't even list the cigar is available. All right. Um, so it's a marketing machine is what you're saying. Yes. <laughs> so it's a company that's very, very forthcoming with their information. So th this is Oscar Valadares who did the Leaf by Oscar, made it for... The people that own Leaf by Oscar, right? Correct. This, and this is his sole his so this company isn't, that makes it. This isn't uh, Island Jim of no, Leaf by Oscar. Fame. I believe it's not. This is just the guy that makes it. I believe so. You know, my first time meeting Jim was at my first trade show as a buyer, and I'm going around buying cigars, but also 
videoing for the cigar authority. Yeah. And I go up to his booth, and he's got this leaf by Oscar. It's the weirdest looking thing. Yeah. And I go, you know, before we get into whether or not we're going to buy it or not, it's pretty cool. Can I do a video with you? And he says, well, can I have my assistant... Carol or whatever her name is. Yeah, do it. And he's I go, a guy with a parrot on his shoulder with a yeah, big he, giant hat and, and a crazy necklace. His yeah. shirt's unbuttoned down to his belly button. But he's shy. And yeah. I'm like, <laughs> dude, don't look at me. You, you are the video. You're, this, right. you're the sales pitch for this cigar. It's as weird as you are. Right. And so he, I finally get him to do it. He killed it. And uh, when we smoked that cigar, man. Great. On. Unbelievable. Yeah. So 2012 is the year he officially entered the cigar business. Okay. Oscar Valderas. And if I if I understand this right, Oscar was the driver for Rocky Patel mm-hmm. in Honduras. That's some credentials. He was not right in the cigar business. Cigars. He actually drove the car. And people down there have a driver, right? And there's a guy that sits in the car, usually armed, and uh, he's there for your protection and also to take you from point A to point B. And you go in the hotel, and he sits and waits. Until, you know, just sits there until the guy comes out. and It's all day, every day. That's it. And this is what he ended up uh, Well, because it's doing. either be a driver or be a ditch digger. I mean, it, there's not yeah. a whole lot of job choices. So he was a driver. And from what I heard, wanted to get into the cigar business and said, you know, I want to get it. I want to get into it. I want to get in. And probably rock. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Because <laughs> he's never heard anybody ask him that before. And then he ends up saying, you know something, I'm doing it. And he did it, and a lot of people know him from when they would go on trips, and he would be the guy driving. And, uh, I, I never went on that tour, so uh, I, I sent a bunch of people, but I never went myself because that was more of a party than a... Um, Cigar trips? Yeah, from what I heard, it's more more fun than... Speaking there. of parties, you just got back from a party. Absolutely, and, mm-hmm. and uh, there's the perfect segue because what is... TAA, Tobacconist Association of America. Can I interrupt for yep. one second? Do you think in our 10th year we could stop acknowledging out loud segues? The segue when it Is happens. it possible? Could we just have a segue just, one time and just go with it? Go with it. We could. We could. But right. where's the fun in that? Yeah. No, I'm just surprised that he asked a question. It was the perfect layup. And uh, and you had, to, you had to acknowledge get, it instead of just get. go with it. Yes. <laughs> one time. That's what I'm looking for in the new year. For us, that starts April 1st. One time, I would like a professional segue to happen and us not say anything until <laughs> maybe the after show. And then, ah, and then the this, after show. The and after then show. in this episode, we had a segue and <laughs> no one said it. <laughs> and that'll be the whole after show. All right. We'll see if we can pull it off. But I, I'm just so happy and surprised when it, when it <laughs> goes that way <laughs> that I want to mention it and All right. well, keep it zip going. Zip your fly back up there and, we go. as you were. All right, so this TAA, Tobacconist Association of America, this is not like the IPCPR, the International Premium Cigar and Pipe Retailers, which has a convention and uh, lobbies for the rights of cigar smokers, and lots of things go on within the IPCPR. The TAA, on the other hand, Tobacconist Association of America, is a party. It's a bunch of alcoholics that get together once a year and buy cigars. There's there's some cigar talk and there's some buying of cigars, but that is minuscule compared to... Did you golf this year? I didn't, but golfing happens. uh, Skeet shooting happens. Um, Can you go golfing one time in the new year as well? No. You don't want to play... Especially a place like that. This was... What is it? It's called Hair of the Dog? Tooth of the Dog. Tooth of the Dog. Yeah. And uh, it's one of the best top golf places but one of the uh, cocktail hours we had was on the driving range and everybody has lit golf balls and um the the area is all neoned out and stuff and it's like uh like bowling with neon balls and you know it's pretty cool did you do that no, no. <laughs> you're the most boring yeah person. and i'm not there for the party jonathan would be all over balls if he was there. yes he would he would but this is <laughs> 70 retailers uh, and they have, they have multiple, most of them have multiple stores, uh, but 70 different um, retailers um, who claim to be, this is the best retailers in the country. Um, and Why do you say it like that? Because you're in it. And I'm in it, but. We are one of the best retailers in the country. And some of them are and some of them aren't, but um, this is the idea of what the association was. And I've been there, I think, since early 2000s. And um, it certainly wasn't the case. And 
this was something I tried to get in from the very go in the, in the 80s. I tried to be a member of this, and they wouldn't accept me. And I would just keep putting in applications to be a member. And then eventually I ended up giving up and saying, the hell with this. If they don't want me in, I'm not, I'm not going in. And then finally they called me and said, okay, we want you. And you have to be nominated by another retailer and a manufacturer, if I'm not mistaken? Well, it was a manufacturer that not only nominated me, but paid my way in. And they called me up, and I said, geez, I didn't even apply. And they said, well, somebody did for you. And I said, who? And they said, well, we can't say. And I said, all right, um, so what does it cost? And he says, it's all paid. Somebody paid for you. And I said, no. <laughs> I said, I'm not let somebody pay for me. And then they finally uh, gave in and said, okay, it was Christian Aroa. No kidding. Um, and I said, well, let me call you back. And I called him, and I go, why'd you do that? And he said, we need you. Um, also responsible for you having the black card, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes. He's pushed you into a lot of things. Yeah. So uh, he said the organization, organization isn't what it used to be. It used to be top retailers and everything, but it got to be – old retailers and not top retailers. So it was people with um, longevity. You know, they've been there for a long time. Good old boys. Yeah, good old boy network, very much so. And um, they're not letting anybody in the club. So he said, uh, please go in. And I said, okay, um, how much did you pay so I can send you the money because I don't want a, a freebie in there, but let me go check it out. When I did get there, they said, okay, here's how it works. You're new. I know you got a lot of ideas and you want to say a lot of things. Don't say anything. Just listen and learn. And I said, okay. So the first year, I'm not going to say anything. And the first meeting happens. And as they're talking and saying it, they're thinking I'm all going to jump in. And the first head turns around looking at me. And I'm just sitting there. And then the next head turns around like, oh, my God, why isn't he jumping in? That was the perfect thing. He's going to yeah, jump in. Up. Yeah. It was a segue. It was a segue <laughs> and looking at me. And actually, it was the place I got my first text ever in my life that my phone lit up and a text came in and I didn't even know what it was. And it was, why aren't you saying anything? And I'm like, what the hell is this? Somebody is <laughs> typing on my phone. What is going on? And then it's when possessed. It, then when it goes to break, Christian came over to me. It was him that sent me my first text ever. And he comes over and says, what the hell? Why aren't you saying anything? I said, I was told not to say anything. Well, who said that to you? I said, this guy over here and this guy over here. And he went over and went into the back room with them, yelling and screaming. It becomes a whole big thing. And he comes and says, say whatever you want to say. And that's when the fight starts. <laughs> you know, then yeah. it becomes, okay, this is what it is. You are literally the last person that I would want to take a leash off of yeah. at any sort of convention. As time went on. They started bringing in other retailers, squishing out the ones that were you know, break up the old boys network yeah. type of thing. And it became a great, and it is top retailers now at this point. Do they have everybody? No, I'm certainly they don't. You know, is there some dead weight in there? I'm sure there is a little bit. But for the most part, very good organization of top retailers. What I would like to see, though, is more business being conducted, more information as opposed to it is a, it's a party. It's a, a tax write-off. Yeah, vacation. but what, what they're hoping happens is that you, there's so much downtime that you're going to spend time with manufacturers. Retailers will spend time with manufacturers. But what I see ends up happening is retailers spending time with retailers, which can be good, too. Sure. Right. That a few people sit around or something. And I, I had um, probably like a four-hour talk with Jeff from Corona and uh, Kendall from Outlaw Cigar and me, and I think there was somebody else, and sat by the pool and we talked for hours, and we were talking about theft, actually. And I said, oh, my God, wouldn't this be something if we were mic'd up for everybody else to end up hearing these stories that happened? It was fantastic. Wild stories. I mean, it would be great to have them on the show to, oh, to tell these stories. It was fantastic. That's um, one of my favorite shows to date is when uh, Jeff came on kind of impromptu. Mm. He was in the area. Yep. So uh, some of the members there have been there for 40 years um, that weren't pushed out. So you're talking about a re top retailer with 40 years experience, which is, listen, big, big news. Um, I love the old stuff because history repeats itself. So you get into talking to them about the old stuff. And then here it is again uh, happening today. Um, there's associate members, which are the manufacturers. And there are 70 retailers. There's probably about half of that 
as manufacturers. Uh, most of cigar manufacturers, but some of them are accessories and things like that. There's some pipes, there's some other stuff like that. Um, um, oh, 30, I have the numbers here. 32 companies and 28 of them are cigar brands. So we, we got a... Uh, Is there any... I know that the um, of those 28, some of them do special editions for TAA, but are there any accessories specific to TAA? Yeah, um, over the years, they've had, like, Calibri would make a TAA lighter set of lighter cutter combination. They didn't have it this year. Um, I don't know if anyone ever did a humidor or anything like that. I don't remember. I don't but recall did, one. Yeah, but there's been a lighter cutter set made. Um, but the big thing, the big changes that happen over these years has been the um, handheld, not now everybody uses their phone, but they used to give you a handheld device, um, and it's the Dream Machine, which was a collaboration buy between all the retailers together, and they would, you know, pop up a brand on there and say, okay, this is brand X, and if everybody in this room buys a thousand boxes of them, you automatically get 10%. If you buy 2,000 boxes, you get 20%. If you buy 4,000 boxes, you'll get 30% off. Um, and um, then they'll say, okay, you got a couple of minutes or something, and the music starts playing. And say I put down on one of 50 boxes, and you look, and okay, we're at 1,200. You can change that 50 boxes now and say, all right, everybody else, everybody put a little more in. Let's see if we can get over. All right, I'll go 60. I go 60 boxes. And then you see, oh, we're at 3,000. We need a little more. All right, I'll go 65, and, you know, everybody else is clicking a little bit more in, and boom, 4,000. And then everybody gets the deal That's of awesome. what it is. And then what would happen is they'd ask some questions of the manuf of the retailers and or manufacturers because they have a handheld too. If You know, this question is just for manufacturers. What do you look for when you're – putting your cigars in the store, retailers, what are you looking for when you're doing this, trying to get information, very, very interesting information. This year, they didn't do any of that. Really? There was no questions in between to say it. And his, th this was the, the swing and miss of the show, I think, is, wow, we're all together, and why aren't we talking about what's happening? And what can we find out be between well, because, each other? And, and that would be more important for the smaller shops, I would think, because obviously the bigger shops – already met at the pool for right. four hours and yeah. had their conversation and that information would be invaluable if you could get that out to the public swing and a miss and, and also in the past i think they they've had um some unbelievable speakers i mean they had the guy that was the ceo of um holly davison before and this guy was awesome, and he explained their whole marketing technique of, of taking um, Holly Davison from um, a, a bad look of scariness and then bringing it to the mainstream and selling millions of bikes and people buying all the clothing and everything that ended up happening with it that he did. And he explained what the mentality was of, of that. Listen, we're in, you know, you say that has nothing to do with cigars. Well, look at how people look upon cigar smoke is stinky, you know, sure. get out of here, it's a cigar smoke. There was a lot that could be learned there. And uh, that was all missed also, that they brought nobody in. Mm -hmm. And um, you, the belief now is that we have people within the organization that we can bring on stage and we can find out from them. So one interesting thing they did was they brought a panel of three um, different retailers who do um, – exceptional merchandising in their store. And merchandising is not just the layout of the cigar, but, you know, creating a little story around what it is. So, uh, you know, for instance, you know, say you had the acid toast, for instance. Yeah. You put a table out and you put a toaster and you put some acid toast popping out of the toaster and a box of the cigars and you display around it and whatever. And it kind of tells a story that here's the toaster, here's the thing. And then it'll automatically attract somebody to look at it. What's up with this? Oh, the brand is toast and, you know, this is the look of it or whatever. And a little disruptor. Yes, correct. And that word was brought up a whole bunch of times. Um, 
it's, it, is it something missing in this industry? I'd say absolutely. You yes. go into a, a woman's cosmetic store and you have displays. You go into liquor stores, you have beautiful displays. You go into a cigar store and the cigars are just laying there and that's pretty much the thing of it. So <coughs> I think uh, there was a, a big uh, takeaway for retailers there and hopefully we'll start seeing some changes that happen in stores. Things like um, the Perdomo display you see there with the hanging uh, four packs. Um, the Davidoff displays that are in stores, right. um, lighting, you know, things like that. So, yes, there is takeaways you can get from the other retailers, but I personally loved people outside the industry coming in and learning from them because there's a lot this whole industry needs to learn, and I think it was the missing uh, link that happened there. L- loved the deals, but loved the information that I would get from the Dream Machine even better, to be honest with you, and they, they discontinued it, or hopefully they bring it back, because I, I brought it up to somebody, and I said, what's up with that? Well, we thought, you know, we'd just get to the deals. You know, we're there for four or five days. There was plenty of time, but, uh, you know, golfing for eight hours and skeet shooting and uh you know did you do any skeet shooting i didn't do anything i'm i'm there for business you know uh i I don't need a rum tasting for four hours because i don't sell rum and i don't want to drink anymore just you're back you're off the wagon i'm off the way i tried while i was there (laughs) i tried And I got all, you know, Barry, I, he's such a disappointment. Yeah, I mean, I tried. I got, I had, nobody Canadian, likes a quitter. quitter I, yeah. I had Canadian Club while I was there. Oh, I don't what, like Canadian Club. No. Uh, and what is that? It's a whiskey. Whiskey? All right. So I, I saw that and I said, oh, my father used to drink Canadian Club. Let me try that. Hated it. Uh, Johnny Walker Black again. Everybody was pushing me on that. And I said, I, I had it. I didn't like it, but all right, let me try that. Well, I think we came to the conclusion on one of the previous shows that you enjoyed rum more than you did bourbons or whiskey. Yeah, whiskeys. you're more of like a fruity drinker. You, you need <laughs> margaritas. Yeah, I don't want to drink a fruity drink, though. I don't want to. Because well, you're, people you're in talk Romana, like they talk about you. Cosmopolitan you could have gotten a good nice for you. drink with the little umbrella on it. Yeah. It's pretty. Who doesn't like a pretty drink? I had, then I started getting into the Coca-Cola with the sugar in it, which was delicious. Yes. Good Very Coca-Cola. different down yes. there. Yes. Good Coca-Cola. So you mentioned the Dream Machine, and we're not going to throw anybody under the bus, but is there any manufacturer that has a tough time meeting their goal? You know, the weirdest thing happened. I don't know if I should even get into this. (laughs) Nobody listens to us. You you know, uh, (laughs) nah. Oh, come on. (laughs) Spit it out. The the guy that used to own Zycar. Okay, I know who you're referring to. Um, We're not going to mention names. We'll protect the guilty or innocent. Well, I've I've gone this far anyway, but anyway, yeah, let me just leave it out. Um, (laughs) He was a guest speaker. He's out of the business. He's out of the business. They brought him in, and right before the auction happened, which is pretty much an auction, right? The Dream Machine happened, and it was Zykar that that, um, sponsored this thing for years since the very beginning right so they brought him in and right before it started he did a whole thing on controlling your inventory and that you need more turns and you shouldn't overbuy. and immediately following starts the dream machine and the first thing on the dream machine is the zyka dream machine deal after he just got up for an hour and told everybody to control your buying and I'm looking at all the manufacturers this is going on. Their eyes are popping out of their head with daggers. They want to kill this guy till somebody ends up saying, well, this ain't going to be good. You know, what is going on? And it was almost like sabotage. What the hell is going on? The good news was the retailers don't pay a lot of attention to what's going on because everybody <laughs> overbought everything, which is what the idea is. But why, in God's name, would they ever let him get up there and do that immediately before this thing went on? It was the craziest thing. Yeah, you'd want to have a guy going up talking yeah. about how you should overbuy. How do you think the people at, that bought the Zycar company that was next, <laughs> that happened to be sitting at the next table over from me, were feeling that we just paid this guy all the money for it, and he just told everybody to not buy yeah, too much. Phone it in. Whatever you're doing, I just couldn't believe it. And then you that that becomes the talk of the yeah. rest of the of the it's show. Asinine. Is what was that all about? Yeah. But he, he did it, and that was bad. The other big thing at that show is they actually make cigars just for that show. 
uh, TAA exclusives. Which is how the majority of consumers know TAA. But it's so much more than a limited This is the 50, 51st year of it. Yeah. So th there wasn't any eight years ago. So this is a relatively new thing. Yeah. And as it gets more popular, more people start adding exclusives. There was always two brands. Ed, maybe you can help me remember what these Ocaso was one of the brands. Hmm. No? There was Ocaso mm -hmm. and there was another brand. There were two brands that were exclusive to TAA. Mm -hmm. And this is when TAA used to have their own little catalog. Do you remember that, Barry? No, but you, I think you had showed me one of those catalogs yeah. at one point. So that was part of it when you joined TAA, and they stopped that as soon as I got in, um, that you would get – everybody would get a 1,000 catalogs, and on your 1,000 would be the name of your store, but everything else was the same within the catalog with the prices and everything. You could send them out. It was all set, and they bulk printed, and then it would be all the manufacturers that were in – TAA would be in it, so that was a good thing for them, and yeah. all these people were pushing their brands, and for whatever reason, that ended up stopping, too, so there, there was pluses and minuses that happened over there, but uh, we, um, let's get to the um, exclusive list of new stuff when we come back, but right now, what's our early thoughts here on the 2012? I've been doing a lot of talking. Bland. It's a, it's if I had to sum it up in a word, it would be bland. Is I don't it, know that that's completely fair. I mean, it's it, it's a good cigar. It's burning well. The burn, the combustion line is solid. It's burning fast. Yeah, box I mean, pressed. Look, I mean, look, the, the, look at Barry's. He's almost done. Yeah. The draw, uh, being as free as it is, would let me know that they probably pulled a leaf of tobacco out of there to make right. it so that it would draw when no. they box pressed it. A little citrusy, a little hay. Yeah, uh, I mean, this is an undetermined origin Connecticut, but it seems closer in flavor profile to a true Connecticut versus an Ecuadorian. It, it doesn't have that bitter edge that the Ecuadorian Connecticut's yeah. have. It's a good mild cigar, man. This is good for first-time smoker. Yeah. Or your grandfather. Or my the grandfather. This is my grandfather's <laughs> Connecticut. Right. Except the for the box press, right? Yeah. <laughs> So in every way, it's nothing like your grandfather's Connecticut. And flavor and strength, it's totally it's burning good, but this is a two in strength. Yes, maybe even a one. Yeah, this is about as low as so it's going to go. It's exactly what you thought eight puffs in when Jonathan made fun of you? Basically, yes. Okay. But he's hungover, so we'll let it slide. I think the hangover's subsiding and the anger's coming in. <laughs> That's what we're doing. We're trying to help you. <laughs> How much is this? Eight sixty nine. Yeah. A little pricey, but there are definitely. Ah, never mind. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll uh, go through the exclusive list of TAA uh, exclusives coming out and uh, the schedule of events and the gossip that I heard along the way. And later, a blind new cigar. And we're going to smoke it on the show and see if these guys can guess what brand it is. And should I buy it? We're live at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. There was a time when cigars were the hallmark of elegance and success. In this time gone by, the aficionado would revel in opening a beautiful box, only to find their favorite celebratory smoke emblazoned with a heritage-laden band. It's time to put the bundle down and travel back to this golden age. For your voyage, may we humbly suggest the only cigar worthy of being packaged in a handmade marble box. Berlin Wall Series from Hammer and Sickle. Live well. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta. The Romeo y Julieta love story with a bold and modern twist. America's favorite love story takes on a modern zeal with this A.J. Fernandez collaboration. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta, crafted in Esteli, Nicaragua, is a contemporary take on the rich and robust profile of the Romeo by Romeo collection. This exceptional premium offering employs an aged San Andreas wrapper, considered one of the most flavorful leaves used in today's premium cigar market. Handcrafted in Nicaragua by cigar master A.J. Fernandez, full flavored, dressed in a stunning San Andreas wrapper. Rich and bold profile with notes of dark chocolate, spice, and licorice. And available in four sizes, Robusto, Toro, Pyramid, and Short Magnum. Competitively priced under $10. Romeo San Andreas by Romeo y Julieta. 
the Romeo and Julieta love story with a bold and modern twist. It's an exquisite day here at the Jensen Estate patio overlooking the 13th green. And we're underway. Jim Jensen has chosen his favorite stick. The Diamond Crown Number 4 by J.C. Newman. See the way he holds the cigar, Tom? Mm -hmm. Excellent balance and heft. Ooh, he's eyeing the silky Connecticut Shade Wrapper. Fermented twice for the smoothest, richest flavor. And hand-rolled by the Fuente family with a blend of six to seven distinct Dominican and Caribbean basin tobacco leaves. Each lovingly aged for at least five years. Oh, now Jensen's lining up the Diamond Crown. He's got a precision burn, Tom. Mm, those highly complex flavors with hints of dark chocolate really deliver, Bill. Yes, like all cigars in J.C. Newman's premium diamond crown line. That'd be the highly rated Maximus and the Julius Caesar. Ah, now Jensen's settling in, rolling the rich smoke through his nose. Look at the satisfaction on his face, Bill. Oh, a thing of beauty, Tom. Experience the premium diamond crown brand by J.C. Newman at select retailers or diamond crown lounge near you. Find us on Facebook at J.C. Newman Cigar Co. or visit diamondcrown.com. I want to talk to you today about my friend Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars. I've known him for many years. Glenn is a very nice guy, one of the nicest guys in the industry. Always friendly, always happy. So when I heard his brand Christoph was pissed off, I was surprised. Christoph Cigars have always been known as smooth and rich, and the pissed off Christoph is just that. But there's something else happening here. A natural San Andreas wrapper, the binder, Indonesian, and the filler, Nicaraguan. And like Glenn Case, the cigar starts off sweet, but then it gets pissed off. And like Bruce Banner, you don't want to piss off Glenn Case about Kristoff cigars. Or do you? Expect some spins and a nicotine kick. Strap yourself in for a ride. Pissed off Kristoff is deceivingly strong. You've been warned. Sold in 10 count boxes, four sizes including Churchill, 6x60, Robusto, and Corona Gorda. The hottest new brand is the Pissed Off Kristoff. Take it for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. With over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar, and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy. The Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar making process. Padron Cigars, they give you, the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padron Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. I want to tell you about my friend Hochi Blanco, a fourth generation Dominican cigar maker known for growing tobacco and producing highly acclaimed cigars for other people. As some things stay the same, other things have to change. Finally, Hochi's factory, Tobacalera Palmer, has produced the cigar that not only belongs to the factory, but pays homage to the cigar rolling room known as La Galera. The La Galera Connecticut blend is special, using an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper surrounding a Dominican blend of Peloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and a varietal that Hochi named T112. With the exception of the wrapper, Hochi grows all of the La Galera tobaccos himself and carefully watches over every step. The flavor, smooth, but still offering plenty of flavor in all sizes, paying homage to the people and tools used in the factory. Now for the amazing part. La Galera, Connecticut has a suggested retail price ranging from $4.95 to $6 and has been awarded the Cigar of the Year by the Cigar Authority. La Galera, Connecticut, creating their own version of the Connecticut cigar because they demand more. Hello, this is Houston Aurora from Jerry Tobacco. You're listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. All right, we're back. We're smoking the 2012 Connecticut by Oscar the Toro and talking TAA. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cigar Authority. Somebody writes, TAA, is the TAA ever going to be in the USA? Uh, Tobacconist Association of America, and it's always in another country. And then you take the IPCPR, International 
premium cigar and pipe retails, all was in the USA and nowhere else. Well, you could say when it was in Mexico, it was in Central America. Yeah. <clears throat> now it's in the Americas. The yeah. Dominican Republic's considered, the islands are considered yeah. the Americas. Yeah. Uh, Good so, save, parents. Yep. <laughs> the, well, you know, again, this is nothing but, not nothing but a party, but it's uh, a lot of it. And the majority of it. Well, so, your issue is going to be smoking. Yeah, where you're going to go and do what we do. Uh, you, you're going to have to find a, a, con- a free country, and that isn't the United States. So we have to go somewhere else where yep, it's getting worse and we worse. have freedom and rights. So we have to go to other countries. Uh, Some place where they don't have Yelp reviews? Is that where you're? I don't know if they have Yelp reviews. I don't have would Yelp. imagine if you were to light up. I'm staying at the Marriott this weekend, and if I lit up in my room, there'd be a Yelp review against the Marriott for allowing smoking. Well, they're happy to have us, and um, uh, I, I like the Dominican, especially that side of the Dominican Republic where the resorts and all that stuff are. It's pretty fantastic down there. Uh, next year, back to Mexico. Not crazy about Mexico. Yeah. What part of Mexico? Uh, the Mexican part? Yeah. Um, where the resorts are, what's the famous one? Punta Cana? No, that's the Dominican, Dominican. Republic. That's Damn where it. I was. You know, you got the one. I'm really on the, not good with geography. You got one on like the peninsula on the Gulf side, but then you got the others by the uh, Cabo, Cabo. Cabo, yeah, yeah, mm. Cabo, Los Cabo, yeah, Cabo, yeah. yeah, a lot of good tequila there. Yeah, is there such a thing as good tequila? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay. I, I did a lot of tequila. well. There's tequila, and then there's bad tequila. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you can say is it a good the, tequila in I the same sentence. I did numerous tequila shots last night, and I'm not hanging over like this, Jamo. Yeah, do you mm. eat the worm? I thought it once. I think yeah, mezcal it has yeah. a worm, not tequila. How gross, right? Yeah. That becomes your claim for fame. You put a worm in it because accidentally it was in there once or something. <laughs> they go, no, we do this all the time. It's on Shh, purpose. Everybody's gonna want one, right? All right, so they have um, the exclusive series at TAA, um, and these are things they make sometimes for one-time releases and sometimes ongoing, but you must be a member of TAA to carry it. So if you go into the stores and you see these, uh, you, you get a big spank, and if you sell it off to another store or anything, it's only for these stores. So you shouldn't see it. If you see these brands, it's a TAA dealer um, that should be carrying it. A.J. Fernandez is doing a New World Maduro round. Instead of the usual box press? Yeah, so I don't know if the blend or anything changes or anything, but well, instead of putting the round, they're going to most likely add another quarter of a leaf yeah. of tobacco. Because to some of them up. actually have a little asterisk and tell you that it's different, but they don't. They didn't have. Yeah, this one doesn't say it. <clears throat> CAO Brasilia Select. I don't know about it, but it's Select as opposed to the crap they put into the regular ones. I don't know. <laughs> so why would they say Select? But it's the CAO Brasilia Select. The crown Heads, the Angels Anvil. The Angels Anvil. T-A-A. So when you see that, that's every year when they come out with the Angels Anvil, they think it stands for the, um, TAA stands for the Angels Anvil, but it's Tobacconist Association of America, but that's their play on words. And it's a black and silver band this time around, and the company finally put crown heads on the band at the foot. Ah, okay. So crown heads is finally, because people don't know what that is. Correct. Okay. Don Pepin Garcia comes out with his original uh, Don Pepin Garcia but a blend variant, he calls it. So it's blended different, no, no sample. It'll have uh, Pelo de Oro in it, which okay. makes it different. Um, Ar- Aroa Jamastron 1118. So this the is Yamastron. Yeah. Yamastron. And it's Husto. No. It, it, <laughs> no. <laughs> Christian. It's not. It's Christian. <laughs> So it's Christian. U- I'm just talking about pronunciations okay. here. I'm helping. Utilizing. Thanks. Uh, so I don't get an email from Alex. So the 1118 size is the one that's bulbous in the center, you know, um, and the packaging is pretty cool because it's the old packaging from the original Camacho box that has the little slit on the top that you got to dig in. But he made it so the bottom can open up. That is the only cigar that way before the TAA had buzz, as far as I know, in the shop, people coming in saying, are you going to carry the Amistron? Are you going to carry the Amistron? Ah. I mean, when I tell you 10, 15 people have asked about it, that is going to kill when it lands. All right. It's pricey. I think it was 18 bucks or so. Uh, 16 50 All right. 
Um, so they're coming. They're coming. They're ordered. Um, E.P. Carrillo's limited edition La Historia. He did that before, right? Yeah, it's a regular line. There's three sizes. This is a size extension. Okay. And J.C. Newman's Brick House, C-I-E-N-T-O. Ciento por Ciento. How'd we do? Okay. Ciento por Ciento. It's two white guys asking a white girl <laughs> if they pronounced the Spanish word correct. This it's is a, great. So it's a blend variant from the uh, Connecticut, I believe, right? I believe so. Seeing pictures. Um, it's a Nicaraguan Puro. So. Yeah. But it seems light in color. But it's light in color yeah. compared to the original, yes. So, And so we have to buy these limited releases, and they have shown, but the majority is there's no sample. How many would you like? And very hard to go all in. It's not easy. Yeah. So I, I tend to go light on this stuff because I... Well, and the I, other thing is you order it now. And in some cases, we're not going to see this until 2020. Yeah. You, they, they haven't made them. They wait for the orders Absolutely. and they make them to order. Absolutely. Some of the, some of the times they, they wait for an order yeah. or they give you something and say, you know, this is going to be a bad representation of what it's, what it's going to be. But here you go. There's a few already slated to come out next month. But then one we get to a little bit later, LaFleur. They're not going to come out till sometime in the fall. Yeah, which which happened, is com- that's which common was, for them, right? But which was Padron was sometime in the fall, and it didn't come out till the next year, right? So, all right, Hoy de Nicaragua, Antonio Grand Reserva, Presidente and Toro, two sizes, uh, TAA fiftieth, which is the fifty first, but it's the fiftieth <laughs> Segunda Segunda edition box press Toro. You really shouldn't help him. Maduro you should make him suffer M- through it. Maduro and natural, so two different variations. Variants. So, so it's what they did last year, the second edition of what they did last year. Yeah, last year was a torpedo. It was only available in one wrapper. This year it's going to be available in two separate wrappers. Last year was Tupac and Biggie. The ver- yes. So last year it was only available as the natural. So last year, as I recall, they said, it's a vote. Which size do you want? Yes. And then we picked the size, and this year yeah. coming is the two sizes you didn't pick. Correct. Well, one size of dun, Toro. Dun, dun. It says Toro and Presidente. No, that's the uh, Hoya de Nicaragua. Oh, the oh, it's just Toro. Mexicano is just Toro. Oh, just Toro. Okay. And it's a twenty dollar retail. Mm. I have one, and I got a feeling it's very strong. So you're welcome to it if you want. It's yes, please. Yes, please. Mm-hmm. Uh, La Polina Silva Label Toro. Yep. Uh, people are talking g- good about the La Polina Silva. Um, Nat Sherman Timeless Limited Edition. Again, another brand variant. Blend. Blend variant. Um, Tatuaje ESP 51st. ESP. Yeah. And if you, in, on the release of the pro- uh, production, he has the biggest production of any of the limited yes. editions. Um, absolutely. Uh, they, they had brought up two of, two of the cigars handled like 90% of what they ended up, uh, receiving because the TAA received some money from the sale of every single one of these products. Um, uh, and then there's ongoing TAA exclusive, including the Alec Bradley black market elect Toro, illicit, illicit Toro, the, um, Ashton VSG Robusto Especial, Drew Estates Acid Big Bang, Drew Estates Herrera Esteli Toro Maduro. Look at you. So proud. It's brutal. <laughs> brutal. Uh, it's bad enough when you're reading in English. La Aurora de Cuba, Mi Amor, Reserva Bellicoso, the Padron 64 Toro, and the Rocky Patel Martinique Toro. Are they not do? is Padron not doing a second? Release because their because last it took year's them one release year just came <laughs> just arrived. They're not doing which, anything. I got to tell you, the it, it's a Corona size, which Ed Sullivan likes that size. It is fantastic. I have never smoked it. It's fantastic because they we ordered a ton, yeah. but they're coming in piecemeal. Dribs and drabs. Yeah, we, yeah. Still, we still have over two hundred boxes on order, and they're sending. 10 Maduro and 4 Natural. Oh, my God. And then a couple of weeks go by, and we're getting like 8 Maduro and 4 Natural. And, and I, I got to say, I'm split between whether or not I like the Natural and the Maduro better. They're both so good. Now, everybody was asking for more of them, and he says, are you crazy? Because they have so much 
uh, back orders. They can't keep up with the regular uh-huh. production. Um, but the other, the, the regular Padron TAA Toro size is one of my go-tos on the regular. That's right. a great cigar. All right. So uh, last week we did it for the first time, and I know a lot of people listen because uh, we got a big listenership of it. Uh, it's the after show. Um, and um, Don't expect we're going to do a 40-minute segment after a two-hour show. But we are going to do an after show. We're going to do an after show. So the show is over, and... Ed does his thing, whatever he's got to do, and then we actually record a little show. You look depressed about it. Because <laughs> it's it's enough. And, by the way, I had no – we had, uh, obviously, uh, Skip and Mike here, but we had – didn't know we were doing it, and we had no – The idea ready. The idea came up organically. Yes. As we're sitting down doing our <laughs> mic check, Yeah. Skip says we should do this. That's when we take the filter off the next show, right? I could say whatever I want, offend yeah, whoever I want. because there is no sheet. There is no okay, nothing. Cool. So we're just going to go and then release it on Wednesday. And uh, the idea <laughs> is that Skip said, I, you know, I'll, I'll sponsor it if you do it. And it's like I don't need another thing, but I'll do it. Well, the, what's great about it is there is no script, so there's no need to prep. Yeah. You're just going to go off the cuff and whatever happens, happens. And just when I stop drinking, right? Right. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll make up for it, buddy. All right. That ding ding means it's time for the matchup of the week brought to you by VS. VS <coughs> means versus, but it stands for Victor Sinclair. Victor Sinclair cigars. Um, so, did I do. Oh, let me go with this. Would you rather have no arms or no legs? No arms or no legs? Those are your choices. And there should be no questions you, added to that. Hang you, on. Well, wait, you're going to ask a no, question. No, because I need you, clarification. Uh, wait, I'm going to go first. Given my browser history, I need arms. And I'm just going <laughs> to leave it at that. <laughs> just going to leave it at that. If I went with no arms, is it okay to semi-permanently attach something to my nipples so that people, you know, when I'm dancing, people have something to hold on to? You can add something to your nipples, yes. I'm going no arms then. That's easy. Because you're a dancer, you need your legs. I need my legs. But you got no arms. Can I swap and do just like have the left side? I don't even think this is an answer because you need arms to wipe. Ah. Well, you get one of those toilets that, you know. Yeah, I'll just be using your bathroom. (laughs) I'm still going no arms. Really? If I had to choose, I'm keeping the legs. Ed Sullivan, straighten these guys you can't out. Kick, simple, no legs. No you legs. can't kick anyone's ass if and you then, have no then legs. Then you get those metal. You can shoot them. You get the metal things that the soldiers. I didn't think of that. But my, I, my nipple clamp idea would have a way for me to be able to fire a firearm. Maybe you could get scissor arms. You could be Jonathan scissor arms. Stop talking crazy over there. <laughs> The answer is legs, of course, because yeah. you can get those metal things that yeah. the soldiers have their legs blown off on. Oh, I didn't put, think of that. Put those yeah. metal things, you can run faster. and Like that guy that I guess killed I, his wife or something, Oscar. That I, guy in South, uh, South, America, yeah. South Africa. Yeah. yeah. I don't know that. So if I went with no legs, I could still put things on my nipples. You can. <laughs> I changed my answer. Well, uh, you I'm could, going no legs. Now I can wipe my own ass. And I can still have nipple clamp And in things. fact, this is radical, but you could put things on your nipples now if yes, that's really you what you're into. Ed Sullivan, you are always thinking. Does, yeah. does anybody have jumper cables in that car that they can bring up to the stage? <laughs> the Baroness does. She's always she's always there for me. So, so for a hundred dollars, I would like them attached to the battery, though. That was my plan. <laughs> Prior to for a hundred dollars, <laughs> add that to the list. Yeah, We're doing the it. challenge later. I'm going to make a hundred bucks today. <laughs> And a wet sponge. Right. So, <laughs> as I said, a lot of talking going on, going along uh, as the, you know, downtime is happening. and We don't have a lot of, you, you had mentioned theft earlier. Yep. We really don't have a lot of theft. No, we're, we're overstaffed, overstaffed for, for, for that, that very reason. reason. So, do the other and stores. And we do a rotating inventory to keep the employees honest, for the, keep everybody honest. Plus, we have cases that they open up. But you go to most cigar stores, you walk into a room yep. right where all the things are laid out and it's a it's a we've got cameras all. everywhere we've yeah. got mirrors for the blind spots and the, the reason for this is to keep honest people honest correct but most w- people are honest but you know if given you, the opportunity yeah they the might. horror stories i hear if they're good friends and are they terrible stories. experiencing a lot of theft yeah 
Really? Yeah, there's a lot of people talking a lot of theft. Probably too at TMI, but screw it. I'm going to say it anyway. Didn't we last year we have less than 1% loss? Yeah, it less was one-tenth of 1%. Yeah, it yeah. was crazy. I yeah. don't think there's any any brick-and-mortar retail that can come close to that. When, when there's an issue for us anyways because of our cycle counting, we can dial it down to the box, the single, they and can, then – They could too, and, and that's how they end up catching. You know, they, they – bring it down they say you know what it's this thing yeah and the cameras go onto it and boom and they actually set it up and uh i got i get i can't tell the stories but you know because it's their their business sure. and all the stuff but what you know some amazing recovery that they end up doing and listen you you, you got to bring it to the fullest extent of the law so other people see and you have the poor people arrested and walked poor out. Poor people, the thief. I know, mm-hmm. I know, but it, and, no, and, and I, here's how I feel. If, if I was selling milk and bread and there was a starving person they stole from me, that's one thing and I'd give them extra stuff and help sure. them. But this is premium cigars. Nobody needs this. You know, this is... Well, I do. Yeah? Yeah. Don't steal them. No, I never <laughs> <Yeah>. do. <laughs> Don't steal them. Um... But lots, lots of conversation going around, uh, that being just one that was very, very interesting to me. But another thing that was going on was um, the setup of manufacturers setting up a scenario for me. This is why it was, it was done. <laughs> for me to see that there was collusion going on between a company and another company. And it really wasn't happening, but they were setting it up so that I would see this. And, oh, look, you know, they'd come up and, hey, look, look at this guy talking to this guy. Something must be going on. You Setting know? it up on purpose. Yes. So that you'd have more to yes. add to your conspiracy yes. theories. And that's as if why you don't have enough. And that's why I'm leaving it alone because they want me to do it. <laughs> I did this stuff thinking it, it, they didn't like it, but they like it and they want to be brought up. And well, now, brand X likes it when you talk about brand Y <laughs> yeah. and Z acquiring each other or becoming partners. But, uh at, at one point, there would somebody explained to me, "Oh, look at this and this over here," and I got my camera out and I took a picture, and they were so happy. <laughs> and then I said, "Well, I'm not doing. It. I'm not even now. I'm not posting." <laughs> but yeah, we're being set up now, so we got to be careful of people uh, giving out. So that means we've we've come dangerously close to some truth. We deal some of these things. Yes. Are you kidding me? But even the stuff that never came to fruition, we might have seen something. And now they're going to use smoke well, and maybe, mirrors. Maybe and maybe they were counting take, on if you see take your something. eye off this, right? And you know, look at this pretty thing like a magician does, right? He moves his <laughs> hand over here. In the meantime, he's pocketing the ace of spades or whatever. Mm-hmm. So some of that was going on. I was paying attention though, but I'm, it was reverse psychology was yep. used on me. And uh, I'm, then and you I, used and reverse, I, and, reverse. And, and I know you're listening, huh? And then you used reverse, reverse, reverse psychology. psychology. Unless it was really true and they were throwing me a bone here. <laughs> That's reverse, reverse, reverse. <laughs> I don't know. Or maybe they told you it was a setup when it wasn't a setup just to mess with your mind. They, they mess with my mind because I'm still talking about it and yeah. thinking about it. Is there something there? And then just when say it happens, it. it'll say be. Say what it is. What do you do? I told you. I showed you this. Are you saving that for the after show? Of what it is? I could. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Yeah, I could. Tune into the after show. Yeah, is it, now that's a tease. Can we, can we bring up when we when we give a tease? Or, no, you know, you just you're not it. supposed to bring anything up. <laughs> no, just, just do it. Do the tease and don't say anything. All right, what we got to do is say what we think of uh, the 2012 by Oscar. Here's what I'll say about it. I probably wouldn't buy it, and not because it's not a good cigar. It just is entirely too mild. I would expect you probably like it more than I do, but it's... It's a great cigar if somebody is really a beginner and they want to try something very mild. But short of that, if you smoke cigars on the regular, it probably doesn't have enough going on. I just realized I didn't even smoke it at all the second half hour, so hmm. that pretty much just sums it up. I, I had it in here and I forgot forgot about it. I was <laughs> I was talking. Um, I gave it a solid I, shot. It's I'm a mild cigar up. smoker, but this is to another level of mild. Yeah. This, there's not enough going on. Even for you. But... It's a great cigar to use as the beginner cigar that sure. comes in. Right. You have a barbecue and you have one of these in your humidor and somebody's like, hey, I'll have I a want cigar to try with you. Yeah, have this. this is a cigar you get. And, and let me tell you, I built a company around that. But do you well, think- A lot of cigar smokers in the, in the early 90s, right? right? So people were trying it for the first time and actually wanted to 
key things were Bacharach and Macanudo in those days. Mm-hmm. And you'd bring them to the mildest of mildest cigars, and those were the two mildest. And they go from there, you know, what's but the word they say about drug dealers and stuff? It becomes the pusher? gateway, gateway. Okay. This is the gateway cigar <laughs> and the premium cigars. This cigar came out, in my opinion, two decades too late. Do you think you're doing somebody a disservice giving them something this mild as a representation of what cigars are? No, it's a good way to go, and the guy gets used to this is how you you taste and draw and do it, and then you go from there. And, you you know, what I think the misrepresentation of a premium cigar is is bringing somebody to a flavored cigar or a infused cigar, let's say acid or something, because my daughter's a perfect example. She'll hear us talking about these coffee notes and all this stuff like this, and she smokes a cigar, and she says, I don't taste it at all. This was terrible. I want to taste, like, like you said, and I said, oh, let me get you a, a tobacco special. Mm-hmm. I get it. She says, oh, my God, this is fantastic. That's where I should have went first. Mm-hmm. Okay, try tobacco special. There's a flav- flavored cigar or whatever. Now let's go to a mild cigar. Now let's go to what we're talking about. So the chat room has a request, being the cigar is so mild. They want to see if Mr. Yeah, Jonathan can hailers. handle this retro hail without puking. <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> no, he cannot. No, he cannot. For the record, I'm on the verge of puking, anyways. <laughs> so, whew, that stings the nostrils. All right, let's take a break. And when we come back, I got a cigar I picked up at TAA that I found very interesting. Can the boys guess what it is? Should I buy it? I'll let them be the judge. We're live in the Studio 21 the Podcast Cafe, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Stepping into the aging room has a new meaning at Aging Room Cigars, as Rafael Nodal has traveled to Spain, where the idea for Aging Room Solera was born. The Solera method of aging has been used for centuries in the making of wine, sherry, brandy, and rum. The method mixes different vintages, allowing them to age together. For Aging Room Solera, Rafael takes several tobacco vintages and puts them in bales, where they age together for another 12 to 18 months. This allows the tobaccos to marry for a longer period of time. At the end of the aging process, Aging Room Solera becomes a balanced, and complex cigar with a fantastic price point. Aging Room Solera, it will have you calling for an encore. In a time where humidors are overflowing and retailers' shelves are on the verge of buckling, there is one brand that stands out amongst the rest. Sereno Cigar Company offers four distinct blends. The Connecticut, the Medio, Maduro, and Maduro XX, all aged to perfection. Crafted at the La Corona Cigar Factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, each artfully crafted blend comes to life by the experienced hands of master blender Omar Gonzalez Aleman and industry veteran Anthony Sereno. To create this masterpiece, a combination of hand-selected filler tobaccos from the fertile soils of Esteli and Jalapa are aged for over five years and then draped with a luxurious wrapper leaf to bring you an endlessly complex and majestic experience. A post-roll aging process of two additional years allows the blend to marry, creating unmistakable and ever-changing tasting notes that tantalize the palate, leaving you anticipating each and every drop. Visit SerenoCigars.com for a list of retailers, and you can always find Sereno Cigars available online at twoguyscigars.com. Sereno, a majestic cigar aged to perfection. You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world. From exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations of Cigar Science Basics, this is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast, or better yet, passionado. Cigar Journal covers cigars in the U.S. and around the world and is printed right here in the USA. You owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine, Cigar Journal, available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website, CigarJournal.com. That's Cigar Journal. 
Cigarauthority.com. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let me tell you a little bit about the Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary Cigar, or what they call the Three-Peat. Crafted in Rocky's boutique Nicaraguan factory, the 15th anniversary was released in 2010 to commemorate Rocky Patel's 15th year in the cigar industry, and it impressed right out of the gate. The Robusto and the Torpedo both scored 93 points in Cigar Aficionado, while the Toro and Corona Gorda both notched 92 points. The Rocky Patel 15th anniversary is a robust cigar with notes of toasted spice, roasted coffee, and almonds. Rocky Patel himself has referred to his 15th anniversary as the decade on steroids. The 15th anniversary has also been named to Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of the Year list on three separate occasions. Rocky's only brand to accomplish the three-peat. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. The La Galera Habano uses a classic wrapper on a staple cigar for a classy company. Hi there, this is David Garofalo of the Cigar Authority, and I want, no, no, I need to tell you about La Galera Habano. The La Galera Habano is an authentic cigar elaborated with the hands of the best cigar rollers of Tobacco Lera Palma in the Dominican Republic. Blended around an outstanding, flavorful Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, the Dominican-grown Corojo binder, and the filler made up of Peloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and Peloto de Oro, creating a medium to full-bodied, attractively consistent, and aromatic smoke that envies no other. I love this cigar. Have you tried La Galera Habano yet? Well, what are you waiting for? Available at Better Cigar Shops worldwide is La Galera Habano. The wait is over. La Galera Habano. Justo and his father, Julio Eiroa, are continuing the tradition of growing authentic Corojo and now bring you Aladino. Aladino is a true old-fashioned cigar, pure authentic Corojo grown in the Eiroa tobacco farms in Honduras from the original Cuban seed of Corojo. An Aladino cigar represents the golden era of cigars in Cuba, and after one light, this old school smoke will bring you back. Aladino cigars come from JRE Tobacco, a family center company who manage all aspects of cigar growing and manufacturing. This crop to shop operation is fully committed to providing you with quality and satisfaction. The premier Corojo grower in the entire cigar industry is Julio Eiroa, a tobacco grower and master cigar blender who personally guarantees that Aladino will provide you the opportunity to enjoy the true authentic Corojo taste. Take this journey and be part of history in a cigar smoking experience like no other. Aladino. What's going on? This is Robert Kelly from Medfit, Massachusetts, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. I hope they have me back. I think I swore too much. You did swear too much, but we will have you back. That's comedian Robert Kelly. That was funny stuff. Having him on. Go back to, you want to go back to an episode. That's the one where... uh, If it hasn't been flagged for excessive cursing. I I think we actually uh, labeled that one. Did we not, Ed Sullivan? I would have to check on that. Oh, really? I thought that was because that was brutal. <laughs> that was brutal. We're back with our number two, and uh, I have a secret cigar for you. So let me pass that out. And I have one for myself, too. So you're going to smoke it. I'm going to smoke it also. And have you smoked this before? Have I smoked? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. And you're willing to smoke it again. This Interesting. Is- it, this is uh, has a band on it with just letters. This isn't how it's going to look, but the letters on it say NPD-525. Smell of the foot, pasta water. Already have a guess of what it is. Already have a guess. I already have a guess of what it is. Write it down. I already so, did. All right, because I don't want you to ruin it on everybody. <laughs> so it appears to me this is a 6 inch by 50, so a true perfect Toro size. Uh, it looks like it's Connecticut shade or some sort of shade. Ecuadorian shade, Connecticut shade. Um, Beautiful cap. Yep. 
beautifully done, right? Yeah, firm. The wrapper too. looks beautiful. Really firm. Yeah. So uh, the idea of this thing is uh, there it was, and I'm interested, and I want you to help me decide if I should be interested. Help me help you. Help me. And uh, at the same time, let's play a little game and figure out what brand this could be. Um, uh, so let me say it is a extension from a brand. Well, NPD okay, it already exists. Could stand for not the police department. It is. It is not the police department. It's and a cigar. Rocky Patel's new rep is a police ah. officer. So could this be a Rocky? I'm just spitballing here. All right, let's give it a kite and a, and a, and a draw. Let's give it a, a cut for us. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars, which I spend a lot of time with uh, Arthur and Janine and Nick Perdomo. Um, Perdomo is the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S chip tax and lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. And Nicholas Perdomo III is out there on the road. He's working with the company full-time now. Um, and he gave me a call last night on my way home, talking to me about some of his thoughts and I'll whatever. Tell you what, They're it's excited for him. It's not a Perdomo right out of the gate. Draws a little snug. Really? And the ring gauge is wrong. I don't think Nick would... Uh, be making a six by 50. Too thin, fam? I think it's too thin. Could it be Nicaragua, though? On a cold draw, I don't know. But All right, let's light it. This is a nice lighter. Single flame. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to light our cigar today with the Vertigo Attaché. The Vertigo Attaché features a single jet, easy adjustment wheel at the bottom, and the patented Vertigo big-ass tank, which is going to seem bigger. Because it's only fueling one jet. The damn mm. thing lasts forever. It's the Vertigo Attaché for $9.99. And watch for some new Vertigo lighters coming in because they were there and I was piling on new stuff. And I'm still amazed when they end up showing me this nice lighter and I say, how much? And they say, $14. Mm -hmm. And I go, really? That's unbelievable. Pecan Sandy's on the cold draw. I know you guys are already through the... I uh, went through the cold the draw. Lighter. I got a little bit of uh, <clears throat> lightly buttered toast, a little bit of a pecan nuttiness. Uh, the buttery toast to me was a little bit reminiscent of a Perdomo cigar. Ah. Oh. I, I thought you were going to say it was a little bit it's reminiscent of a raisin toast. <laughs> raisin. Are you going to sing it or should I play oh, it? Oh, please play it. Nobody wants to hear me sing. <laughs> You can't throw to your own bit, Ed Sullivan. You're the producer. You seem like you, you got a up. lot of rules. You can't today. do yeah. it. That doesn't. That's not production. You he can't, gave himself now his own segue. Own. Now it's hangover anger. Yeah, you know, he's, he's trying to be angry hangover. You're man. right. He is an angry person. <laughs> an angry hangover man. More cowbell. That's what this needs. Speaking of cowbell, next week it's the freaking Catalina wine mixer. Yes, it Pot is. nine. The Cigar Authority's ninth anniversary. We've been doing this nine years, and next week we're celebrating. Doesn't it's seem like nine years. Oh, yeah. I haven't been here. No, you haven't been here. That's right. You, but you've been around. I've been around. Did you come for shows? Did I ever, did. Yeah? Okay. Oh, I did. Not when they were sad shows, you know, at a card table in the lobby or oh, something. Oh, yeah? No, I didn't. It kind of made me sad. All right. See, we're, this could be Nick Perdomo cigar, even though it's not a 54 ring gauge that we would expect. See, now you're leaning towards Nick Perdomo after you talk yourself out of it. Well, no, There's he's no himself way, out of it. There is no way this is a Perdomo product because the draw is too snug. It's a sample. Never. But, Never. But could it be something to do with Nicholas the third. Ah. So all of a sudden. The, 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 Nick, will Nick allow somebody else in Nick his Trey, family is going to produce a cigar at the factory that doesn't follow the guidelines, the, the stringent guidelines that Perdomo has on his product. Hey, the number 525, if you minus it backwards, 5 minus 2, or the other way, 5 minus 2 is 3. Nicholas Trey. 5 minus mm -hmm. 2 is 3. Both ways. Yeah, NP is uh, Perdomo. not Perdomo. Is what that would be. Nicholas Perdomo. There's no way. NPD, Nicholas Perdomo's dad. <laughs> no. 
But I'm willing. I'm willing to bet. This is still my. I'm willing to bet yes. jumper cables on my testicular region <laughs> he with wants a started to car cables. that this is not a Perdomo product. I'm just saying it's possible I'll based on the initials. Bucks. No. Don't let the band fool you. And it has we a, don't even know if Dave put this band on. It has a butteriness that's familiar to me of the champagne. No. Hmm. Not peppery enough. All right. So let me start giving you some hints. Well, if it's made by the sun, maybe he doesn't right. like a lot of pepper. Should he I, still has to use Perdomo tobacco. Should I just write down my mm-hmm. guess? Yes, please write down your guesses. Write them, write them down and be honest. Don't tell me what they are, even though you can't hold yourself back from saying it. But I, I should let you go and go into yeah. What happens is when you do this blind tasting test, and we do it all the time to ourselves, when somebody goes off in a certain direction, it makes the whole group go in the wrong direction. Everybody falls off the cliff. I'm going, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something that may change your mind. There is a very distinct sweetness to the smoke. So something's going on in the filler under that wrapper that to offset the dryness you would normally get from a wrapper this color. Hmm. There's a sweetness in there. Okay. It's an existing brand, and it's an extension off that existing brand. Okay. I'm not ruled out yet. All right. Uh, Neither am I. 50 by 6 Toro size, uh, the size was smoking. The wrapper on it is a light-colored Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper. So that's your wrapper information. The binder is broadleaf. The underlying really? sweetness mm-hmm. that I alluded to. Oh, huh? Pretty good. I'll, I'll give you one of these. Oh well, goddamn time! Now we have the fillers. What do we have for filler leaves? It's, uh, it's a one country. Hang on, let me blend of let me let me put my guess in here because it's, this is. Uh, it's it's Honduras. Is there some it's Honduras? Is this? Do you do you know the specific varietal of the leaf? Like if I say there's Ometepe tobacco in here, would you know if that's no, true? No, I just know the country. Okay, Ometepe is very muddy. Okay, there's no mud here. Okay, get off the Perdomo kickback. It's not Perdomo. It's not Perdomo. I know it's not Perdomo. I think. It I says think, so right here. NP, not Perdomo. <laughs> not the 525th per, not time. Not Perdomo, Dave. Dave. <laughs> not Perdomo, Dave. 525. This, or in Jonathan's case, it's not Perdomo, dumbass, but that's be, beside the point. <laughs> because of the construction, and, it, and it's, it's well made, and the firmness, I'm just going to guess right now, this is Aladino, Connecticut. That's what I have. Wow. And I'm going to say no, because Aladino is not part of TAA. He wouldn't have been there. Ah, no one said anything about this being a TAA cigar. Dave just said, said I'm I handing you a, a blind cigar that from that trip. That doesn't mean someone didn't it hand maybe, it to him it there. May, maybe his brother brought it back to me. Maybe not. I'm going to say it's something from Nesta Placencia. And I think I know somebody's been very active on social media working with Nesta Placencia on a blend. Um he shared our show today. I'm, just, I'm saying this is a Nesta Placencia, Rafael Nodal. Oh! Joint project on something new they're working on together. So what do you got for uh, Phila tobacco? It's one country blend. Nicaraguan. No, that's definitely Honduran. Well, I got Honduran based on my guess. It's Honduran. Mm. Tobacco in the Phila. Okay. That doesn't mean the country of origin. No, Nestle Placencia works with Honduran tobacco. The one as thing well. I'm going to say is the uh, the burn line is very true around, but there is a little wavy bubble thing going on that it, it's not a perfect burn. It's pretty perfect around. Well, it is. It's burning. Yeah. It's burning up the cigar properly, but it the, it's not as aged as. Others. Well, when when you try a, something with a band or a paper band on it like this, it's not ready for prime time. Okay. So you got to imagine this is, um, you know, hasn't gone through its 21 days or whatever it's going to go through. Um, suggested retail on the cigar. Uh, I'm going to say 10 bucks. I was going to go $10.79. 10 dollars $10. I'm going to. I'm saying 9.99. I'm going to go 10.79. 
I am going to go. He's looking it up. <laughs> I don't you know what he's looking at. You're such a goddamn he's... cheater. I'm going to go 11.50. How can you cheat on a blind taste test? I'm not cheating. I, there's nothing. <laughs> you you can look at the article. The internet. There, there is nothing to do with this particular cigar. I'm looking at the base price about another project he's worked on. All right. I'm going to say 11.50. 11.50. Cigar. So we have a ten dollar. We have an ten dollar. Ten seventy nine. Ten seventy nine and eleven something on you. Everybody is over. It's all over. Really? It's eight dollars. Ooh. So how's that change things? Barry's still looking things up. What are you doing, Barry? Cheating is what he's, he's, he's doing. Got a Look, he's texting going, people. He's got a phone. I, he's no, texting. I'm not texting. I'm doing. A, I'm doing a little uh, investigative journalism. You had two hours before the show. Yeah. Knowing that the cigar was sitting there, you could have had this done, or you could just do the blind taste I, test like I, a man. I know what to do. It's time to find out what's up in the cigar world with Barry Stein. <laughs> nice. <It's time> for <laughs> what's up <laughs> in the cigar world? Brought to you by Recluse Cigars. You want to know what's up? Recluse Cigars is what's up. Voted the 2015 Cigar of the Year is the Recluse Amadeus Reserva Habano. Every Recluse cigar goes through eight, count them, eight fermentation cycles over the course of two full years. They are box-pressed and rolled end to bar for a perfect draw every time. If you haven't done it yet, be sure to try a Recluse cigar today. And in Maryland, the House and Senate passed a bill that would raise the tobacco age to 21. The difference is the Senate bill contains language providing an exemption for the military why the House doesn't. The two sides now must come to an agreement before they submit it to the governor. The Delaware Senate has passed a 21 bill that now moves to the House, and it's a measure the governor has stated he will sign. And as we've alluded to all throughout the show, the 2019 TAA limited editions can be found in their entirety on the CigarAuthority.com, and that's what's up in a very slow news week. Yeah, all the news was happening at TAA, and... Uh also, everybody talking about next week, the Cigar Authority's ninth anniversary, and with us will be the Cigar of the Year winner, Terrence Riley from Aganosa Leaf. Aganosa Leaf? Aganosa. 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 However you want to say it. All right. So Terrence is coming up, which will be great, and um, we'll have him here, and um, lots of shows, uh, and talking to people about lots of shows People coming to town and things, trying to make the schedules work. It's getting tough. Um, so we had some some folks that said, well, I can come up on Wednesday and do the Ash Hole show. And the Ash Holes now record on Tuesdays. So messed up schedules and things didn't work out. But uh, back to the secret cigar that was smoking. Um, I told you it is a Toro uh, five, 6x50, uh, ec- light Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper, a uh, broadleaf binder and Honduran fillers. It has a suggested retail price of eight dollars. Uh, there will be uh, other sizes right out of the gate. Look at Barry doing investigation. I'm not going to tell you what the sizes are because it, it, he's going to search that. Um, as I said, it's an old brand name. Well, unless the unless it's an Aroa product and it has an 1118 on it, what difference does it make if you say the sizes? All right, I'm going to say this. It's an old Cuban brand. Oh, that narrows it down. No, it's an old Cuban brand. Barry, Google that. There's only about 5,000 of them. You should be able to narrow it right down. You seem angry. He's Shut very up. angry. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. Um, I don't want to give you too much information. Um, I wrote the stuff down, but um, it's, well, named, it's named after. This is wrong. <laughs> so I can cross that off. <clears throat> it's named after a guy that lived in Kentucky. Speaking of Kentucky, there is an aroma of almost a fire cured ah. thing happening, although there's no taste of it. But the aroma off the foot is a little But I told you a little what, smoky. I told you what the fillers are. You didn't then. say that there was or wasn't a process going on in those tobaccos. You just said that it's Honduran. What do you think for strength wise on this? Pure medium. Yeah, five out of ten so far. I'm a, I'm really? Gin, so I, I thought for a Connecticut, mm-hmm. this was the perfect, not your grandfather's Connecticut type of thing. 100%. Kind of, yeah, it's kind not of your, full body. It's not your grandfather's Connecticut. And I'd say mm-hmm. full seven. Flavor. No. No. 5.3. Yeah, the last <laughs> one we smoked was a one. This is a five. 
It's five times stronger than that first one. You were saying Perdomo. I was saying not Perdomo. Okay. I, I knew it was not Perdomo as soon as I, I took a, a cold draw. Is it definitely not Perdomo? It's definitely not Perdomo. It says NP. And for starters, Perdomo. Perdomo doesn't grow tobacco in Honduras. No, they don't. Tobacco in Nicaragua. That's it. Correct. Could be Nish Patel. But, ah. <laughs> well, the Rocky thing that I had said earlier, kind of, yeah. he's got stuff grow in uh, Honduras, Honduras mm-hmm. and he does work with Placencia. So it could be a, a Rocky Patel. And he already has a mild, mild Connecticut. So for him to come out with, if he came out with another Connecticut, he'd want to beef that up a little bit. That's my that's my next guess. <laughs> Rocky yeah. Patel, CT two. Do a little um, retro hail. A little retro yeah. hail, a little bit, so yeah. I can gag. You, well, you don't have to do it. All right. You're gonna Barry, miss you it though, it. because it's the spice. A lot of spice coming out of that. A lot of spice. Yeah, which Corojo, but I I can't see it being Julio or Justo. There's no Corojo in this. Ed Sullivan, you liking it? I'm liking it. All right. Kentucky, huh? Which, you know. Only, only if you just wave the foot under your nose, you get a little bit of that aroma. They make a Corona, five and a half by 44 at $7. It's a pricey Corona. Mm. Right up your alley. Yeah, I'd still it. buy it. Even It's not as good a deal, but it's the size I want. They got a Robusto, five by 54, 750. Five by 54, dum, dum, dum. What's that mean? Domo, 54. So he makes one one <laughs> size ends up becoming uh, and for and it's a homage from from Nicholas Trey fact, to his father's yeah. 54 love affair. Nick Perdomo is so proud of the fact that he only buys wrapper for Connecticut shade. He, that's the only thing he doesn't grow. Mm-hmm. He is not buying tobacco out of Honduras. He's not opening a facility in Honduras. Nick Trey isn't either. He's on the road right now learning the sales side of the business. You're not fun. You're uh, no fun with never. All right, this brand uh, died out during the Great Depression in the 30s. It came back. And Perdomo calls all of his stuff Perdomo. It came back so in the 1990s. He's not stealing a Cuban brand. It came back in the 90s. It came back in the 90s. The brand was restored. And this may be the next resurrection. I'm still going Rocky Patel. So, old Cuban brand. Huh? You, you think Pete. What'd you say? Kentucky, you say? After named after a person that was born in Kentucky, I didn't mention Kentucky tobacco at all. Right? Was it a, a senator from Kentucky? Oh, oh Ed Sullivan. You're asking did, questions. Did they make some ugly but delicious cigars? Ah, the broadleaf might be a clue. Might be. Yeah. Let's uh, let's go to break. And when we come back... What? It's just getting good. No. When you come back, I'm going to give you the final hints and reveal the answers. We're live in the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let's talk a little about Rough Rider Cigars. So here is where the motorcycle culture meets Cigar Nation. This badass looking cigar uses the name Rough, but delivers a smooth as silk ride each and every time. Even before lighting one, you can't help but notice it's sweet like honey flavor. Smooth and creamy, resembling slightly sweetened butter. Outstanding! The Rough Rider Cigar is so beautiful in so many ways. We're talking a premium cigar, imported, long filler cigar, but wait till you hear the price. Every cigar is in the $3 price range, that's right. Even the Churchill in the 6x60, every cigar is in the $3 price range. Rough Rider Cigars, there's nothing rough about Rough Rider except the name. Rough Rider Cigars. The following message is brought to you by Drew Estate. Drew Estate, the rebirth of cigars in the new Drew Diplomat app. Join me, Barry Stein, from the Cigar Authority on Drew Diplomat. As you know, I am quite partial to Liga Pavada number 9 from Drew Estate. So join me for a Liga and share your experience with Drew Estate. 
And while you're at it, don't forget to check into Two Guys Smoke Shop on the Drew Diplomat app. Drew Diplomat is now available for the iPhone and Android. To learn more about Drew Diplomat, visit DrewDiplomat.com. That's DrewDiplomat.com. You must be at least 21 years of age or older and a resident of the United States, including D.C. To be eligible for membership in this program, other terms and conditions apply. Surgeon General warning, cigars are not a safe alternative to cigarettes. Since 1903, when La Aurora Cigars first opened their doors as the first cigar factory of the Dominican Republic, they have defined Dominican cigar manufacturing. Now, La Aurora continues that innovation with La Aurora Dominican DNA, featuring an exceptional blend whose soul is the Andullo. La Aurora pays tribute to the oldest Dominican tobacco process with a cigar that features tobacco that is part of their heritage and their DNA. The La Aurora DNA features this hard-to-work tobacco that brings the unique characteristics of strength, inspiring aroma, and sweetness that creates an exceptional smoking experience that only La Aurora can bring you. Experience La Aurora Dominican DNA with its Cibao Valley Dominican wrapper, an authentic Cameron binder from Africa with fillers from the Dominican Republic, Pennsylvania, Nicaragua, and Anduyo. Available at top retailers like TwoGuysCigars.com and is distributed in the United States by Miami Cigar and Company. It's time to light that cigar and stay tuned. Ooh. The Cigar Authority will be right back on the United Podcast Network. Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? I'm writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. That Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake. Jose Dominguez, not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. Hey, nobody's going to take away your donut. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. Listen, Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers. The mild, buttery, smooth, natural, and the slightly bolder Maduro. And every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. It's worth so much more, it's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose Dominguez. A legendary brand opens a new chapter in its storied history with the H. Upman by A.J. Fernandez. The nearly 175-year-old H. Upman brand in collaboration with storied cigar maker A.J. Fernandez bring a medium to full-bodied, sweetly balanced, and yet complex smoking experience. Boasting an Ecuador Sumatra wrapper, this cigar produces incredible aromas and nuances of sweet spices. Today, almost 175 years later, the legacy of H. Upman lives on a brand new take on an age-old brand. Handcrafted in Esteli, Nicaragua by Cigar Master A.J. Fernandez. Available in four sizes, priced under $9. A legendary brand opens a new chapter in its storied history with the H. Upman by A.J. Fernandez. This is Jerry from Ben & Jerry's Ice Cream, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority. Mmm, ice cream. Ice cream season's coming. It's going to warm up tomorrow. That's exactly why I played that. It's yeah. ice cream season. It's ice cream season. Uh, so we're back. This would pair well with butter pecan. Yeah, butter pecan. Butter pecan. Yeah. Do you use the the um, waffle cone or do you use the, the regular brown cone or the styrofoam foam? I put, foam? It, I put it right in a cup. Cup? Yeah, I'm not a cone guy. Oh, if I even get a cup, I, I, if it's you want too the big. the cone on top. Uh, yeah. yeah. I like the cone. 
Yeah, definitely not a cone guy. Really? I like a, I like a dipped waffle the, cone. Yeah. But I prefer, if I had to choose, I prefer the waffle cone. There's a place in Sarasota, Florida, they make the cones while you're waiting. Oh, and yeah. You can smell it through the whole street. And That's nice. I, my God. I usually I have to double up. I, when I get there, it's the first thing. And before I leave, it's one for the road. That's why I look the way I look. I can't control <laughs> myself. Uh, we're smoking the NPD 525. Does that words and numbers associated with this brand in any way npd npd 525 well going off of barrett's uh conversation between the breaks who he thinks he knows who is collaborating kind of famous for letters and numbers on blends i'm still not changing my all answer, right but it is it is handmade in Honduras. Really? In Honduras. Uh, once again, I'm f- I'm good to go. You're good to go. It's handmade, handmade in, a, yep, in Honduras. Handmade in Honduras. Yeah, I'm going. It's a Rocky Patel product. By the way, somebody made by Placencia. I'm with you on that. Yeah. And part of that part of that is that Placencia cigars tend to be very firm, and they they still draw well. And this is a good draw. All right, so give me a final answer. Final answer, Mr. Jonathan. Rocky Patel. Made by Placencia. But do you want to say any Rocky Patel type of thing? This is the... No, I don't understand. I think you're throwing us a curveball with all that Kentucky crap you're talking over there. It's just going to be a Rocky Patel vintage, maybe, or Rocky Patel. Do you want to go with maybe maybe a, a Nish Patel? Do you want to go with a... No, uh, it's going to be an RP. It'll have RP on it. Okay. And okay. then... That's it. RP okay. Connecticut, the second coming. Okay. Of All right. some kind. As soon as I saw NP, instantaneously thought of Nesta Placencia. I've gotten enough samples from various manufacturers to not recognize this style of label. So that fit for Nesta Placencia. Uh, you mentioned Kentucky. We had Brad Winstead on. This looks on. exactly like Rocky we Patel had, samples. We had come. Brad Winstead on the show a few weeks ago. We yeah. teased the Henry Clay Warhawk. I'm going to say that's what this is. Okay. And what do you have? I've got Henry Clay. you got Henry Clay, too. We have two people on the same exact thing and a Rocky Patel. Can I change my answer? Because Barry made a good argument there. Yeah. Do you want? Does anybody want to go back to their original thoughts? No. You, no. There's no way. There's no way that somebody could be making a cigar in another country that never did before. Not. No. Not, just asking. No. Not saying anything. All right, it's time for the Don Raphael Offer of the Day, and then I'll give the answer. The Don Raphael Offer of the Day is brought to you by Don Raphael Cigars. Everyone has a price. Would you do this? And if so, how much? Today, $100. I got cash on me, and we have a bathroom right across the hall. Drink a glass of water out of a freshly cleaned toilet. Did I clean the toilet? You can reclean it if you like. Yeah, I mean, if it was Leo, that doesn't count. It was Leo. <laughs> no, no, that doesn't count. <laughs> Leo's a cleaning guy. How yeah. Much, <laughs> how much money? One hundred dollars. Glass of water. I think that, like, lick a doorknob. That's dirtier. Then that's what they say. It's porcelain. It's clean. It's fresh water coming out. We have a toilet here. I mean, I could pour bleach into the back of it, run a few cycles, really scrub it. I'm out. I can't. It's not enough money. The, the, the amount of work that it would take to clean the, the toilet to that level to feel confident drinking a glass of water. Glass of water, Barry. No. Ed Sullivan, you're in. Nah. Nah, he's no, nobody's in. The problem is that somebody once pooped there because it's a... Clean porcelain. It's clean as can be. What yeah, if it, uh, what if somebody urinated in a cup and then you wash the cup? You gonna drink out of the cup? Yeah, I would do that. But it's the idea if they the pooped poop. in the cup. Yeah, I'm throwing the cup away. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I have the answers. Well, I don't recall hitting the asylum button. Did we skip that one last? Yes, we did. Oh, we skipped it. Yeah. Barry, well, you got something good? And an okay one. All right. Let's, let's, let's have it. It's time for the uh, Peak from the Asylum from our friends at Asylum Cigars. They're coming to take me away. Ha-ha. They're coming to take me away. Ho-ho. Hee-hee. Ha-ha. To the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time. 
time and I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats and they're coming to take me away. <laughs> it's time for news from the insane asylum. Odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true, or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars, Take No Prisoners. Asylum Cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars with sizes ranging from 4x44 to the absolutely insane 8x80 Asylum Cigars. In Toronto, a group of doctorates guided with degrees from medieval art to 6th century English to women's studies for a discussion on human flatulence. One of the speakers, Ashley Ingle, a proud feminist, argued that because of gender norms, women were not allowed to release gas in public because of men's unreal expectation of women to be clean and feminine. Furthermore, she articulated that if a woman was to fart in the presence of a man, and the man responded by farting louder than the woman, that it would be rape. Rape. The discussion boiled down to women's bodies being controlled by society and women being told what to do. The discussion led to the topic trending on Twitter and the creation of hashtag fart rape. But if you ask us, we just think it's a bunch of rotten smelling hot air. And that's not only insane, it's asylum. They're against it. They're against farting. Hashtag fart rape. I fart louder than my wife all the time. You are, you are raping her. According to Ashley Ingle. Now, where where does Ashley Ingle come on the Dutch oven? Because that <laughs> that's my go-to move. Do you hold it down and not let it get out? Oh yeah, that's rape. Oh, yeah. That would be rape. Yeah. I'm she just says, to, and she says no. As we discussed before the show, uh, farting's good for you. The, the the smelling of someone else's flatulence helps to stem off all kinds of cancer. So I'm just saving her I'm, life. Unless it was a cow. Cow farts are bad. By the way, there's a retailer in the chat room that we all love, and I say that sarcastically, Whoa. Um, that says that this is an Altatus product, and he was at TAA. And he knows it is? Well, I don't know if he knows it is, but he's pretty loud. Hmm. Yeah? Yeah. And he knows it's correct? I don't know. We'll find out, I guess. All right. Here's the answer. Um... I'm hoping I'm wrong now, just so he's wrong. He is right. It is an Altatus product made in Honduras at their factory, right? They have the, uh, I can't think of the name of it. Don't they have their own factory there? Uh, I couldn't answer that. I'm not really familiar with Altatus's factories. I think they do. I know there's been a lot of pictures of Rafael working side by side with Nesta Placencia on Facebook. Yeah, for some reason, I'm I'm blanking out on the name of this. It's terrible of the factory. But uh, the Henry Clay, Clay Warhawk is the first in a three-part series of cigars named, after, uh, named for the Immortal Trio. Henry Clay's former Speaker of the House, as uh, Ed Sullivan uh, brought up uh, in the early 1800s, he was a leading role for the pressure for President James Madison to defend the country by declaring war against Britain in 1812. The term war hawk is used to describe someone who favors war as the ultimate resolution of a conflict. It is made at the Flor de Copan factory in Honduras. Flor mm -hmm. de Copan, which is their factory. There it is. Is that why you couldn't remember it? Because it was written down? <laughs> I wrote it down. In case I would forget, and I, and I did. You not I thought only I was, forgot. I thought I was wrong, and it turns you, out I was. You not only forgot the name of the factory, but you forgot that you wrote it down. Correct. That's awesome. But I did write it down. Um, and um, Henry Clay lived in Kentucky, and he ran for U.S. president three times. Um, and uh, it's been around since 1840, and one of the oldest Cuban brands out there. It is, as Ed brought up, it was the ugliest cigar ever. Uh, I loved what it tasted Delicious. like. Delicious. Delicious, ugly-looking cigar that came in these wheels with paper band wrapped around the wheels of it, distorting the cigar even more, um, yeah. you know, making it bend and all that stuff. But wow, was that, during the boom when everything was lousy, this was the lousiest-looking cigar that tasted the best. And uh, you brought up Pete Johnson also. Pete was a big fan of, of, of yeah. uh, Henry Clay and the Broadleaf. Yep, and he's a big fan of bringing back old Cuban brands. So yeah. that, and when you said it was an old Cuban brand. Well, he, 
I mean, he, he, did, did, he did a Henry Clay he for He did that. a Henry Clay, but he didn't do this Henry Clay. And this Henry Clay is using the broadleaf as the binder. Yeah. Honduran fillers and this beautiful Ecuadorian wrapper on it. It was the, it was the uh, standout of the show, I thought. It was very, very different. This is very good. Yeah. It was very different. And uh, the price is right on this. Every, everything's good. Yeah. Everything's good. I thought I thought it was great. Uh, it, it's not a TA exclusive or anything like that. But they said, "Here's the new, is the new cigar." I smoked it, and then I said, "Can I get four of these for the show?" Awesome. So they know. And uh, they said, "Sure." I said, "I promise, I'll do it on the show." And uh, there it is. And I think it's it's a winner, and we got to get yeah. on this, and it's coming soon. Yep. Yeah. And. Uh, Somebody, you know, definitely provided the biggest hint before the show started, as I shared with you. Yeah. By sharing the show, and he never shares the show. Because <laughs> he he's on it. Yeah, right. <laughs> but he had a feeling that we were going to be smoking that cigar. So that right away put me on Altatus USA. All right. And All right. But it's not, I mean. I call foul. I think Barry cheated. He shouldn't be allowed to I, use the internet I used to do my, blind tasting. I used what was available to me to deduct what the cigar was. You would have never guessed it on taste. You're not no, not on cigar taste, because it's, we've it's never so, had it. Yeah, but, but this is not Henry Clay-ish. No, it's definitely not Henry Clay-ish. But, you know, you were down in the home of Altatus. Yep. Uh, Brad Winstead was at the at the show. Yep. We, he did mention it on the show. Yep. He said he would get you samples on the show. Yep. Deduction. He did. he did. Well, and I think once you mentioned the price point, it knocked a lot of people out of there. Right. Yeah. Because a lot of the guesses, this would be a $10 plus. Cigar. Sure. Sure. So I think the value is there, everything. I'm excited for it. Um, you know, a lot of people, I, I think, don't know what Henry Clay is. You know, an old brand of, uh, again, not coming back until the 90s. And then it, then it was pretty boutique then yeah. because people would look at it and overlook it. And, you know, those in the know would say, oh, these taste good. They don't look that good, but they taste good. Did they have the packaging on display at TAA? Yes. Because I, I saw a picture of it. Nice looking wooden box. You take yep. the top off. It's got these two little hooks. It's almost an ashtray at, the, at that point, but right. I don't think it's coated or anything as an ashtray. But Kind of looks like an ashtray once you took the top off. Um, be interesting. Their marketing, the, the whole thing is very different. It, it's a, it's a young look at Henry Clay or something. It's it's pretty good. I don't know. I liked it. I thought it'd be interesting. We'll talk more about that on the after show. But um, pretty good. Pretty good. Definitely something different. I don't know. 92, 93 at this stage. You know, it's a pre-release, but it's really good. Yeah. And typically, you're not going to rate a cigar on a pre-release anyway, no. right? It's got to come out. It's got to come out. Got to get them in yeah. retail. And uh, But right now, I'd say just based on the sample, 92, 93. It's, yeah. It's really good. Yeah. And, and beautiful looking. And I think, uh, uh, you know, your, your thing again on the Not Your Grandfather's Connecticut Shade, I mean, it's got a ton of flavor. Yeah, it's, a ton of flavor. Uh, I like the uh, the idea of, and I don't know if a lot of people use it, but the broadleaf binder. I think it, I, I like that a lot, yeah. too. I'm getting a little bit of a note of butterscotch right now. It's very tasty. Nobody was saying, um, oh, Ed Sullivan was saying uh, Honduran right from the go. I think you were. Yeah. Honduran, which I was surprised you were going to say that. I, think I thought everyone Jonathan was going to... was in the Honduran camp at the start. Yeah, because it, it has that it has that firmness like Aladino has, and yet it draws. Um, I, I was able to eliminate it because Perdomo's draws a little more loose than this, so I was able to eliminate him as an option that Barry was guessing yeah. uh, three or four times, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> So anyway, I don't think the um, letters and the numbers meant mean anything. No, <laughs> well, not. evidently not. I mean, I, I, that's why I kept bringing it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know how I play this game, uh, but I'd like to play another game. Let's uh, squeeze in the, the classic three-way brought to you by Classic Cigars. You've heard of epic rap battles, <laughs> but now it's time for the epic battle. Wow, it's kind of intimidating to be in the presence of so many great athletes. For this day, tell anyone about this, I'll f-ing kill you. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. In classic history, is looking at you, kid. Brought to you by Classic Cigars. Nervous? Yes. All classic cigars are handmade and imported from the Dominican Republic, and every cigar is priced under. Get this, under. Three dollars per cigar. You like that, baby? Let him know where I came from. Yeah. Choose any blend, including the classic Connecticut for its mild and smooth taste, the classic Maduro for its bold, 
and spicy flavor for the classic Cuban for its sweet sun-grown and nutty overtones. That's undertones, you idiot! Whichever classic you choose, it's a classic cigar. Available at twoguyscigars.com. That's twoguyscigars.com. Celebrate today with a classic cigar. Well, Skip Martin won it last week. Skip and Mike Rosales was the champion, but we got to go back to the year previ- the show previous, and it was Ed Sullivan was our champion, so he's going to go first. I have five questions and one tiebreaker if needed. Ed Sullivan, the first telephone was installed at the president's desk in the White House. What year? First telephone installed at the president's desk at the White House. What year was that? 1908. 1908. 1841. 1841. 1899. 1899. And if it was the first one installed, then who did he talk to? Just the first one at the White House, you don't. Yeah. There were phones everywhere. But they didn't have one in the White House? Correct. Okay. <coughs> Um, it would be 1809. We'll take the point because it's 1829. It was Hoover. No, everybody's over. Everybody's over. I had 1899. What do you mean everybody's over? Ed Sullivan said 1909. And it's 18, 1929. You oh, said you said 18. Oh, it's 1929. 1929. Hoover. Okay. So it would be Ed, Ed Sullivan. Sullivan's. Sorry. Because he was in high school then. I remember that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Jonathan, Evil Knievel breaks 93 bones after successfully clearing 35 cars today. What year? Uh, that's going to be 1962. 62, he says. 77. 77. And I had 1972. 72 for two. Ed Sullivan, two points, 72. Well, that, that I do kind of remember. Yes. <laughs> Barry. Howard Stern formally announces his libertarian run for New York governor. I lived in New York when this happened. Yes, you did. Uh, 2004. 2004. I had 2002. 2002. 1982. 1982 for the point. 1994. But 82 goes way under. Good call. That was a long time ago. That was Did you a- have that written down? Okay. <laughs> the one who cheats. Can we cheats. check the videotape to see if he wrote it down after the The fact? one who cheats on the show is the one who has a paper over his laptop. This is because you cry to have his cell phone upside down. You don't whiner. Ed Sullivan. Living La Vida Loca, sung by Ricky Martin, was released. Goes on to sell 8 million copies. It was released today. What year? No idea. Living La Vida Loca. Living La Vida Loca. Come on. Was your favorite thing? I I heard that you do that at the uh, the clubs and stuff. I do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. 2001. 2001. 1999. 1999. 1988. 1988. Somebody's got two points. Mr. Jonathan, two points. 1999 is correct. I well, was a DJ then. It is an wow. anthem of his people. It is. He's got... Three points for Ed and three points for Mr. Jonathan. Barry's a goose egg. One question left, unless we have to go to a tiebreaker, and it goes to Mr. Jonathan. John Panette, American comedian. He died in 2014, but he was born today. John Panette, you go home now. You'll be you here eat. for an hour. His, uh, his brother's a customer here at Two Guys. As is Don Brennan. Yes, Don Brennan. Uh, 1958. 58. Seven minutes. You've had an hour, Barry. Yeah, nine. Messed up. 1979. 79. 1952. 52. Mr. Jonathan will take the point and the win. Mr. Jonathan. It's uh, 1964. He said 58 for the point. And that is it for (sighs) that. That La Vida Loca thing, that was a gimme for him. Yeah, and the oh, telephone yeah. was a gimme for you. The guy, so, the guy buying you drinks last night. Did you two dance to that song? The telephone was a gimme for you. <laughs> what is he? Get? I don't know. Get I did have a gimme for you. I think really? for the tiebreaker, which is Richard Okasik 
is an American singer, songwriter, musician, and record producer, best known as lead vocal, rhythm guitar, and songwriter for the rock band The Cars. What year was he born? Rick Ocasek. 52. I'm going to say 47. I was going to say 47. Oh, you'd all be over 43. Oh, he's old. Old. Yeah. You don't see him around anymore, right? He was. I think he's just counting his money. Yeah. Wasn't he married to Paulina Porozakova? Yes, yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah. He was an ugly man. Yeah. yeah. Giant ears, ugly guy, large penis. Yeah. Speaking of experience, you, yeah. you notice firsthand. Did he take you for a drive? It wasn't so small <laughs> that it was one hand. It was two hands. The following message was submitted through the Contact Us page of the CigarAuthority.com. And Andrew writes, hey, guys, I'm new to cigars and love the podcast. I just wanted to know y'all's opinion on y'all. what is a brand that I could. Did he say y'all? Yeah. No, okay. Y'all's opinion. All right. What is a brand that I could get? Cigars where the blend is similar or the same, but the wrappers are different, so I could taste the differences uh, to see what I like. Also, some good mellow to medium strength nicotine-wise cigars with a Maduro wrapper. Thanks for all you do for the industry. Andrew from Maine. Okay, so Maduro, light Maduros, they're, they're hard to find. Yeah, you got, well, one kills two birds with one stone. You got La Giana Natural Maduro. The thing that separates the two is the outside wrapper, and it happens to be a mild Maduro. So you have that as a, an easy. And also Honduran. And it's on, yeah. they're both Honduran. Uh, Aladino Maduro is not all that strong. And uh, if I'm, I think the blend is similar. Between the natural yeah. and the Maduro. One's box press, and I think it's a different blend. What about the Garofalo's between the Connecticut Sun Ground and Maduro? Maduro is strong. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's strong. It is a strong, but you can see the difference in yeah, the wrappers. In uh, it, 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 the different blends. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of somebody who only changes the wrapper. Or even Leaf. You know, Leaf has Connecticut, Corojo, Maduro. Yeah. And Leaf is a good Sumatra. one. Those Leaf all- is a good one. Yep. Those Leaf all- Maduro. And the, I know we smoked the Oscar Connecticut earlier, but the Oscar Habano is a mild Maduro. I believe well, it's you a, on yeah, that. It's a that Habano. Was, which was great. It's a Habano. It's a dark Habano. There, yeah. there is there is an Oscar Maduro, but the one that you're referring to is the Oscar Habano. Whatever. Mm. It's dark and it's delicious and it's mild. I yeah, I would say La Giana or Oscar. Brickhouse, is that is considered a Maduro? Well, Brickhouse has a Maduro. Maduro, yep. Yeah. And they, oh, they have one. Yeah. yeah, they do. And the Maduro's not all that strong. I think yeah. you could. That, that's I a good one. And that. a Habano in a Connecticut. They, have, they right. have it all. They have it all. Good choices. The after show is coming up. Last week uh, lasted longer than we wanted to do. It was a test to see uh, how it would go. We went 40 minutes. We're going to go I actually, half of that. And, and we can do whatever yeah. you guys want, but I. I have a mailbag that I wanted to get to for the show, but it's going to be a longer conversation than what we have. So I have an option. I, j- I just saw it. I'm going to save, save it for the after show and whatever else we can possibly think because we got to gear up for next That's week. That's what I was saying is yeah. I have a mailbag for the after show. All right, good. <laughs> you didn't know so what should we I save it for yes. the after show yes. since I have it for the after show? Yeah. Oh, you, that's what it's for. I just yeah, saw I it, and I'm like, oh, my God, this would be a perfect right. conversation for the after show. Because what I don't show. want you doing is preparing for the after show. I haven't prepared. I it just was the next mailbag. That you're in love with each other. Don't prepare for the after I show. have not prepared. I just saw it. <laughs> I just got the idea now. Mm. That, that's okay. It can happen. It was organic. Show. I promise. <laughs> he accuses everybody of cheating, and he's caught cheating himself. That's cheating. I, I took the mailbag <laughs> off the top and just read it, and now I'm looking at the next mailbag and saying, we don't have time you for this. You had it perfectly placed. So With it the would other show mailbags. Up. You knew it was there. Hmm. I'm Karen Fowl. Can we say the C word on the show? Don't say no. anything. Save it for the after That's show. That's what you are. Save it for the after show. Cute. So, <laughs> <laughs> and cuddly. <laughs> Henry Clay Warhawk. What do you think? Solid. It's solid. It's, it's buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it. Yeah, it's a home run. All right, we're gonna do that, and they expect it to come in in a few weeks, maybe a month. Uh, a few. They don't even have the bands on them yet, so I would I would call it a month from now, or maybe maybe May. What do you think? Maybe May. They're uh, saying a few on during time now, so you got to carry the one. <laughs> this is gonna be a fall release. No. So after we concluded what it was, I looked up the actual cigar it's, that's how i saw the box was kind of this old box but it's gonna according to the picture 
It's going to have the classic red Henry Clay band with his secondary gold band. Oh, yeah. I didn't see the bands or anything. Yeah, this is the picture that Rafael Nodal had shared on uh, one of his social media accounts. Okay. Yeah, he's got, he's got it. Yeah. I'll tell you, we, I did that thing again with the this time four cigars at the uh, at the factory right. trying to four they they put a Honduran, Cuban, Dominican, Nicaraguan. I got and I was confused of two of them, the Dominican and Nicaraguan. I'm like, ah, I could go either way on here and if I had done what the other way, I would have gone correct, so I only got two out of four, the other two were flipped. But Ed Santa Maria, who was sitting beside me, His said, palette. I got the answer. Here it is. First time ever doing it. Nailed it. His I think he was the only one. Hmm. There must have been 50, 60 people there. The only one. They wouldn't actually allow the manufacturers to do it. They were there smoking along, but they said, we don't want your, your input because it's like cheating. It's but, not cheating. It's no. like Barry with the internet doing a blind tasting. But, um, yeah, I met Oscar, who was uh, the, the uh, Cuban guy from Habanos on, on the Cuban side, and we went to dinner with him the following night, and uh, uh, they were improving stuff, and uh, they're working lots of things, so I got some information on that, too. So uh, that's it. We'll get to uh, that stuff uh, on the uh, after show, or whatever name we're going to call it. Uh, let's come up with something in the next minute or so. Uh, but next week, I'm looking forward to it. I can't believe 2010, we started the thing on April 1st. And next week is nine years of doing this ridiculous show. Should, and we're adding to it. Should we order the cake now? We should. Sammy B. Okay. I need a cake in the shape of a nine. Next week, the friggin' Catalina Wine Mix of the Cigar Authority's ninth anniversary show. And joining us is the winner of the Cigar of the Year, Aganosa Leaf's own Terrence Riley will be with us. Until then, you've been listening to the Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And uh, you've learned nothing in the last two hours, so always remember to keep the lid end out of your mouth. The views and opinions expressed by the host, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.